Guys, my name is JC Rangel. I'm 32 years old from Los Angeles, California. Originally from Mexico. And, uh, you know, the way it all really started was I, I was actually born in Mexico and at age six, uh, I was brought to this country. My mom actually came from Mexico when I was about four and a half years old. And <clears throat> she came to Los Angeles to um, pursue a better life for my brother and I. And uh, she worked for about a, a, a year and a half then was able to bring my brother and I, save up enough money to bring my brother and I to this country. Uh, the first time that I remember, it was my grandma that brought us to this country, and uh, she tells me the stories now. And the first time that we attempted to come to this country, we were unsuccessful. I just like to say that. Uh, but then, you know, the, the happiest day in my life, next to my son being born, was the day that I uh, was reunited with my mom. And I remember very specifically, uh, getting off the car and running across the parking lot at the apartment complex that she lived in. And I remember looking at, at those uh, parking stools, right, and knowing and thinking to myself, don't trip over that. I, I still remember that I was about six years old at the time. And um, I remember jumping over it and giving her a hug, my brother Louis and I. And uh, one thing that I saw was that my mom used to work more than one job, and in addition to that, she used to work uh, businesses on the side, like network marketing businesses. So when I was 10 years old, I was uh, going uh, to network marketing businesses with my mom. When she'd go do meetings, she was drawing on a chalkboard or a whiteboard, and I was drawing circles on a piece of paper, kind of copying what they were doing or drawing some cartoon characters or whatever the case may be. Uh, but I, I guess I always knew that I was kind of an entrepreneur because when I was around that age, around 10 years old, I used to sell chocolates for the, for the elementary school that I, that, that I attended. And I remember making the school a lot of money and thinking, man, I'm making them a lot of money. I'm selling them a lot of chocolate. I was pretty, I was natural at it. If I didn't need the chocolates. And what happened was that one day we're driving by this place, uh, Helen Grace Chocolate Factory with my mom in, a in her 1980 uh, Thunderbird, which by the way, she still has. And so we're driving by and I see 50% off on the sign, 50% off fundraisers. I asked her what that meant, so we stopped by. And they pretty much said, hey, if you buy $100 worth of chocolates, you get, uh, if you buy $100, you get 200 chocolates, so you get them for 50 cents each. So I started saving up some money. My mom would give me whenever she could, like a little allowance money if I behaved good. So I rarely got that money, but now I started behaving good because I wanted to save up $100 to get these uh, chocolates, 200 chocolates. So I had about $35 or $40 saved up. She finds out that I have it. She asked me what it's for. I said, I want to buy these chocolates because I want to sell them. Uh, but keep the money, it's not for the school anymore. So when she found that out, she uh, gave me the money, she gave me the rest of the money, and we went to the Helen Grace Chocolate Factory, sure enough, I bought 200 chocolates for $100, and we went and started, uh, sell I started door knocking my neighborhood, and selling the chocolates, and making 50 cents per chocolate. Uh, but one thing that, that I realized was that the kids in, in the apartment complex that I lived, wanted to make some money too. So they were like, man, you're rich, you're rich. I was making like five bucks a day, you know, six, seven dollars a day. That's a lot of money, man, for a kid that's, I was about nine or 10 years old, especially where we were from. So then a light bulb came on, I said, if you guys really wanna make some money, what I'll do is I'll pay you 25 cents per chocolate you sell. So before you know it, I had uh, five or six kids that I taught how to knock on doors and what to say, the little spiel, give them their chocolates and they come back and give me 75 cents for every chocolate that they sold and they kept 25 cents. Uh, that, that's when I experienced for myself, with real money, I experienced the concept of leverage income and I loved it. I, I didn't even want to sell chocolates myself anymore. I was kind of like, man, what I got to sell chocolates for? Why make more money off of my friend's efforts than I do off my own efforts? And I didn't feel guilty. I remember not feeling guilty because I'm the one that saved up the money. I'm the one that came up with the idea, so I deserve to make money. Um, we also had a neighbor that, so we did anything to, to make money, to, to help out my mom, and I was always very interested in, in making money, since I was 10 years old. A neighbor of ours was a baker. He used to make these very, very delicious donuts at his home. And uh, we used to sell them for 50 cents. We used to put them in like little coolers, and we used to go door to door again, knocking on doors, selling these uh, donuts. And um, they also had some cream filled donuts, so they were all 50 cents. I said, I'm gonna sell them for, I didn't tell them, but I said, I'm gonna sell them, the Creamfield donuts for 75. So I'm knocking on doors, selling them, and then I'm making an extra quarter on those Creamfield donuts. I think we got paid like 250 per every uh, box that we sold. And so um, when they found out that like, you got more money, I said, well, I got more money because I sold the Creamfield donuts for 25 cents. So those are my, my 25 cents in addition to my 250 that you owe me. 
Now remember, him and his aunt trying to tell me that they were not gonna pay me the 25 cents extra. I said, no, no, no. You and I have a deal, 250 for me selling whatever I sell it over is my money, give me my money. And I was very serious and uh, I was that kid that um, you didn't want to get me angry. You know, I didn't take no for an answer. And so I, I, I really remember those stories because they're, they're very um, near and dear to me. And so when I was introduced to network marketing for the first time, when I was 18 years old, uh, once again, here's the concept of leverage. Here's also a business that I've seen my mom over the years work. She worked Mary Kay, she worked uh, Herbalife, she, she sold Avon, Royal Prestige, air filters, all kinds of stuff. So they introduced it to me and I said, hey, this is the real deal. Leverage income, residual income, getting paid off the efforts of other people, uh, I'm with it. And uh, I remember at 18 years old writing down Retired mom, on or before, age of 30. And um, I, I remember writing it down specifically because I saw a vehicle sales, never motivated in school. Uh, I went to karate school more than I went to, to school, right, because I had a passion for that. And um, so at 10 years old when I started martial arts, at 18 years old I won a world title. It took me eight years, but I had a definite purpose. I didn't know I had a definite purpose. Uh, you know, I didn't know what a definite purpose was, but now looking back I know what it was. And so that was what I had a passion for. I never had a passion for school, but for network marketing, because I saw light at the end of the tunnel, because I enjoyed it, because I enjoyed the personal development, the person I was becoming, and I looked up to the people that were there, I had a passion for it. So uh, the first goal was to, to make $10,000 a month. Back in 2001, that was what everybody talked about. The holy grail was to make $10,000 a month. And now the new holy grail is more like $100,000 a month. That's what everybody is really shooting for. A lot of things have changed since 2001, in my opinion. And so we started building my first network marketing company. Uh, didn't do very well. Made $60 in my first six months. Okay, so that's an average of $10 a month. Second company paid $500 to get started with the company. I won't mention the name, but it starts with an A and it ends with an N, right? And so uh, I paid $500 to get started with that company. Didn't make any money. And that was because of me, of course. Not, nothing to do with the company. Great companies, great leadership. It was just me. But the third company I got started with, um, I started making some money. I made $300 my first week. Uh, I got started on Tuesday by, by Saturday. There was a Super Saturday with the number one earner. I took four friends. Three of them got started, made, made about $300 and some dollars that weekend. And I was hooked. Then I got to, to one of the top positions that everybody's striving for. And I was making three, four grand a month. And uh, uh, I got into the real estate business and the real estate boom. My first transaction, I made like $6,000. Before that escrow closed, I had another deal that was paying me $10,000. And I kind of put network marketing on the back burner, made very good money in the real estate business. And I thought it was going to last forever. Uh, but it turned out that I was involved at the perfect time. There was a big boom. So I made a lot of money and I spent more than I made. And when the market crashed, I learned a very valuable lesson, lost everything, lost houses, lost cars. And, uh, uh, you know, it just wasn't easy. But I said, I know that I'm good at network marketing. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna get a part-time job if that's what I have to do, and uh, I'm gonna go back and make it happen. By this time, I'm in my mid-20s, but when I was 18 and I started, I didn't have a social security number, uh, so I couldn't get a regular job. Uh, I was driving in a car, but no license, because I didn't have a social security number. So uh, a lot of my friends that had you know, their social security number, whatever the case may be, and they were able to get a job, when I started reading the personal development and attending these trainings, I realized that they don't stand a chance because they're not going through things that I'm going through. I'm building that thick skin. I'm building character. With these challenges that I've got, you know, I, I couldn't get a regular job. I, I was working security at clubs. I was a smaller security guard and working at clubs to make money. Like, I think they pay me 11 or $12 an hour on Saturday, Fridays and Saturdays, some Sundays. And so uh, that, that was my start. So when I lost everything in real estate a couple years later, I said, I'm going to get started again. I don't care if I get just a part-time job, just enough to pay the bills and dedicate all of my other time to network marketing. And I remember having a mentor said to me, JC, if you listen to me, within a year's time, you'll never worry about money again. And he says, don't go out and party with your friends. Don't even have a girlfriend. Don't date. You listen to me and you work and you'll never worry about money again. And I listened to him and I started making a six figure income and stuff and then things started going well I, I, after some time. And uh, the goal to retire my mom happened. I'm, I'm 32 years old now, so 
about five and a half years ago, I was able to tell my mom that she never had to work for anybody ever, ever again and uh, welcome to the rest of her life. <clears throat> and that's the case now. She doesn't work for anybody else. She works at my business because she loves network marketing. Matter of fact, she's, uh, she's got the silver position with my company. She's got an organization of hundreds of people and uh, I'm very proud of her. So she's making you know, a very, very nice residual income uh, and, and bills are no longer an issue. So that, I believe that that's some of the things that motivate people the most is when um, your whys are for somebody else, not just for yourself. We all got whys to, you know, for, to travel or to have a nice house or a nice car, whatever the case may be. But the whys that are for other people, like our parents or our kids or whatever the case may be, I think those are the ones that motivate people more. Those are the ones that make it harder to quit because there's definitely gonna be times that, that you're gonna feel like quitting. There was plenty of times I felt like quitting. Uh, but the more you attend, the more personal development you attend, the mentors you have grows your IQ level. That's your I quit level. And so uh, after a while, you get to a point where you don't have an IQ level. You're gonna go until. Until what? Until you reach your goals. And so it's, uh, I'm 32 years old now, and you know, been able to make a six-figure income inside of a year, been able to make a, a multiple six-figure income inside of a year, and eventually a seven-figure income inside of a year. And so our goal for this year, 2015, is to help 50 people finish the year with a six-figure residual income. And we're more than on track to do that. So the goals are just gonna get bigger. We're very excited for the future. We're very blessed. And the only reason all of this happened is because we were just able to attract the right people. As a matter of fact, a lot of people that are significantly better than me. I feel I'm very lucky. And uh, actually, I feel I'm very blessed. So that's my story.